Today we're looking at multiplying polynomials, either using the distributive property or double distribution or what we call the foiling method. So most students are pretty comfortable with this. We're really just highlighting the fact that when we are multiplying the same base, you add those powers, right? So here we have a case of negative 8 times positive 2. But when you have a y cubed times a y to the fourth, remember when you multiply the bases, you add the power. So 3 and 4 will give us 7. So that's something to keep in mind. Here we have a positive 40, y to the power of 3 plus 2 is 5, and lastly, minus 24, and that's just a y cubed. Again, also remember that when we format our answers, we are going to put the terms in order of decreasing powers, right? You want your largest power in front and the smallest in the back. Take a look at problem number two. This is really a double distribution. We'll take the b and we'll distribute it to the trinomial. And they'll come back through a second time. We'll take the 3 and distribute it to the trinomial as well. So here we go. 3b to the power of 3, right? You add a power of 1 plus a power of 2. Here you have a minus 2b squared. Here you have a positive b. Now when I come back through and distribute the 3, instead of writing those terms in one long row, I'm going to stack them underneath the matching power. So what I'm really doing here is I'm grouping my like terms pretty much all at once. This will be for the constant term. So C for constant term. So 3 times the 3B squared. That gives me 9B squared. So I'll write it as a positive 9B squared. And the idea is we'll be adding the like terms in each column. So we're kind of doing two things at the same time. We're multiplying with distribution, but we're also organizing our terms by combining them right now instead of later. 3 times a negative 2b is a negative 6b, and then we have 3 times 1. So there's my positive 3 as a constant term. That means in the previous row, that was a 0 for the constant term, and we'll add up the like terms in each column. So we start off with a 3b cubed. Here we have a positive 7b squared, a negative 5b, and a positive 3. So that's one option for organizing your work. With a problem like number three, this is more traditional with the FOILing method. FOIL is the acronym we use to describe multiplying the pair of first terms, outer pair, inner terms, and the last terms. That works if you have a binomial times a binomial. This is technically not FOILing because we don't have just four terms. We have five terms, right? So that's why this is called double distribution. So we're essentially doing double distribution here as well because when you do the first times first, you are distributing, and when you do the outer pair, you're distributing again, and then we'll come back around and distribute the negative 3. So it is still double distribution anyway. So we start off with a 24w by multiplying the first pair of terms. The outermost pair gives us negative 18w squared. The inside terms is a negative 12, and then the last of each pair it's positive 9w. So we have like terms here. We need to combine those. But notice the w squared is not in front. So we need to shuffle the terms around so that the terms are positioned with their descending powers. 24w plus 9 will give us 33w. And then the constant term goes in the back. Let's jump down to number 5. Here we have something a little different going on. We have a binomial cubed. All right, so we could... Foil it out and foil it out again. So that would take a lot of steps, but there is a shortcut. There is a pattern, and I'm going to put that right up here. So here are a couple of rules for when we have a binomial cube. Now we have two versions of this. We have an A plus B, or we have an A minus B cubed. And so these are the two patterns. So we end up with the result of A cubed plus 3A squared B plus 3AB squared plus b cubed. The next pattern is exactly the same, but we will alternate every other term with a sign change. So we start off with a positive a cubed, then we go to a negative 3a squared b, back to a positive 3ab squared, and then to a negative b cubed. All right, so what we have here in number five is z minus five. So the first term is z, so wherever you see the letter a, we will put the z in its place. And the last term is 5. So where you see the letter b, 
we will put a 5 in place of b. Now we're not putting in a negative 5. We're treating it as if it's just z is the first term and 5 is the last term because the minus sign is already provided for in the pattern that we see here. All right, so setting this up, first term cubed, so z cubed, and then a minus coefficient of 3 times first term squared, so z squared, times the last term, which is the 5. Going on to the next term, we have a positive coefficient of 3 times the first term, times the last term squared, so times 5 squared, and then minus the last term cubed, so 5 cubed. Now we want to clean that up. So in these middle terms, remember the order of operations. You want to do the exponent before the multiplication itself. So this will end up being z to the power of 3. Here we have 5 times 3, so negative 15z squared. Here we have a 5 squared is 25, times 3 is 75, so 75z. And lastly, 5 cubed, so negative 125 is what we have. So because we want to take a look at this in a bit more detail, I'm going to grab one of the homework problems themselves, and we'll, we'll do that as another example. So if you'll take this page and go to the back side, I'm looking at problem number 22. All right, this time we have the plus sign. So it's a binomial to the power of 3. Notice that our first term is a 5x. So we'll take that 5x and we'll drop it in the pattern wherever we see the letter A and we'll drop in the 2 wherever we see the letter B. So setting this up, we have the first term to the power of 3. So it's 5x quantity cubed, and then plus 3 times first term squared, so 5x quantity squared, times the last term of 2. The next is positive 3 times the first term of 5x times the last term squared, so 2 squared. And then we finish it off by saying positive the last term cubed. All right. And so you can see we have quite a bit of work to do as we're going to be doing those exponents first before the multiplication for our order of operations. Recall that 5x cubed means 5 is being cubed and x is being cubed, so 5 cubed is 125, and there's your x cubed. Here you have 5 squared is 25, so you do that first. 25 times 2 is 50, times 3 is 150, so positive 150x squared. On the next term, we have the 2 squared, so 2 squared is 4, times the 5 is 20, times the 3 is 60. So 60 is our coefficient on the x, and we finish that up with positive 8. So that's an example when you have a coefficient with the variable when you're using that special pattern. Our last example here is just one where we have radicals. Let's see what happens when we foil this out with radicals. So this is our last example here. So here's my first times first. So root x times root x is normal x. Then root x times a negative 4 is so negative 4 root x. The inside terms, we have positive 6 root x. And then last times last gives us negative 8. So we do have like terms here because they have the same radical. So we'll combine those as well. So we're leading off a result with an x. Um, sorry, I forgot that 3x right there. Oops, I made a mistake. So when I did my first step here of root x times root x, you hopefully picked up that I left out that 3. So let's just edit ourselves because you're multiplying the coefficients together. So this is a coefficient of 1 times a coefficient of 3. So yeah, we should have a 3 in front. And then the root x times the root x is the normal x. So let's just adjust that right now. And then negative 4 root x plus 6 root x is positive 2 root x. And the constant term is in the back, and that finishes it up for today.